junkyard dog, I've just got to mention a fact that Paul Orndorff and Rowdy Roddy Piper with Cowboy Bob Orton in their corner will be going against Hulk Hogan and Mr. T with Jimmy Superfly Snooker in their corner. That's the one they're talking about. Big match for you, a shot at the Intercontinental title and Greg the Hammer Valentine. You know, it's going to be one Sunday for everybody throughout the country to remember. You know, usually on Sunday, everybody goes to the big house. But when I go to the big house the following Sunday, I'm going with something. Either a bunch of money in my pocket or Greg the Hammer Valentine hanging off the forces on Thumb Street with that big piece hanging around my waist. Not saying I'm going to win it, Mean Gene. You're but one thing about it, he can't come to the ring like a cabbage. All head and no rear. He'll have to bring a little to get some, and it's going to be a whole lot on this whole cotton beef. Today, welcome to Wadesboro, North Carolina, just outside. Now, I thought I was headed to a town called Russellville. It turns out, Russellville seems to be either really small or not even on the map, really. I, it, it showed up on my GPS, but um, like Google GPS, but not on my car. Right, so it's very strange. A little difficult to find. But Waysboro is just up there. And it's a pretty big town. A lot of uh, shutter businesses, dollar stores, churches, um, small town America. And uh, I took the back roads to get here. It's, it's really in the kind of, it's not near any major city that much. So it's kind of difficult to get here anyway. You would have to take some of the back roads. Kind of like when I went to Leonard Skinner's memorial. And, uh, I enjoy it. I, I like the back roads. Sometimes if I'm in a rush, like I, I, like I am today I'm in a rush, the sun's going down. I was on the other side of the state filming this morning. But I enjoy uh, the back roads. If I'm in a rush, like I said, I, like, you know, I need the interstate system to get to where I'm going faster, but there's really no other alternative route to get here. But I want to get here because this is where Sylvester Ritter is buried. Sylvester Ritter. Junkyard Dog, JYD. Now, if you're a fan of wrestling in the 80s, I mean, there's Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Ultimate Warrior, everybody knows them. Every, like, just, like, casual wrestling fans or people, even non-wrestling fans. Junkyard Dog, I think, is mo maybe at that level. I think, I think so. He was a superstar to me. Grab them cakes. He was one of my favorites. I mean, I loved all the wrestlers. I, lo I liked a lot of the bad guys, but I loved the good guys. And Junkyard Dog was like one of the ultimate good guys. And he's buried just over here. And hoping to find his grave pretty easily. We'll talk about him. And yeah, JYD, Junkyard Dog, sadly died in a car accident, a single car accident. And um, this is his area. This is where he grew up in Waysboro. And I wish I could have shown you more of the town, but I was making sure I could find the church and drive and yeah. Let's take a look. Oh. 
So we're right at the back of the cemetery now. You can see that cross right there. That's where I was just in front of. And there's one little building on the back here. And so Junkyard Dogs should be somewhere back here, I believe. I remember the, the wrestling classic when he beat Randy Savage. I think he fought Iron Sheik as well. And But it was like a challenge thing. He had to fight, fight, fight a bunch of different people all the way. And, and he won. I think that was the first pay-per-view special ever. And Junkyard Dog was the winner. I think it's, uh said Thump. Always on the back of his uh, wrestling trunks. And he always had the chain with the collar around his neck. So we're looking for Sylvester Ritter. Should be right around here. Not sure where. You know, I uh, find the grave always helps. And I can see right there, that's Junkyard Dog's grave right there. And um, find the grave is always pretty correct and invaluable. Let's so try to navigate our way through here. And here is Sylvester Ritter, better known as Junkyard Dog. December 13th, 1952 to June 1st, Junkyard Dog was one of the most electrifying and charismatic wrestlers in the country, particularly during his peak in the early 1980s. Sylvester Ritter played football at Fayetteville State University, twice earning honorable mention All-American status and is a member of the Sports Hall of Fame. He graduated with a political science degree and was selected by the Green Bay Packers organization, but knee and back surgeries ended his football career. He debuted in the Tennessee Wrestling Territory, working for promoter Jerry Jarrett. From there, he moved to Nick Gula's company using the name Leroy Rochester, and then moved to Stu Hart Stampede Wrestling as Big Daddy Ritter, where he captured the North American Heavyweight Championship twice. In the early 1980s, Ritter moved to Mid-South Wrestling, where Booker Cowboy Bill Watts gave him the nickname Junkyard Dog. He had feuds with Kamala, King Kong, Bundy, The Natural, Butch Reed, and Ted DiBiase, who was actually one of his best friends, and Junkyard Dog was best man at Ted DiBiase's wedding. In late 1984, Ritter left Mid-South Wrestling for the World Wrestling Federation. While in the WWF, JYD made a habit of interacting with a growing number of young people in attendance, often bringing in them into the ring after matches and dancing with them. JYD had many memorable feuds in the WWF, most notably with Harley Race, the Funk Brothers, Adrian Adonis, and of course, Greg the Hammer Valentine, before he left the company late in 1988. In 1990, he had a brief run in World Championship Wrestling while it was still under the National Wrestling Alliance banner, where he feuded with Ric Flair over the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Sylvester Ritter died on June 2, 1998 in a single car accident on Interstate 20 near Forest, Mississippi as he was returning home from his daughter LaToya's high school graduation in Wadesboro. The apparent cause was falling asleep at the wheel. His daughter Latoya Ritter and his sister Christine represented JYD as he was later inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So that's Junkyard Dog's grave, which is right here. But right in front of him is his daughter, who was only 31 when she passed away in 2011. And she was on the phone with a friend, and her friend Latoya, Latoya's Sylvester's daughter's name stopped responding, and her friend heard a loud thud. And then she called, so she hung up to call 911 because her friend was responding. And it turns out it was a heart attack uh, that killed Latoya. And cause of death wasn't known for a while. And uh, what's really sad is Junkyard Dog, when he died, he was on the way home from her graduation in Mississippi when he was in that car accident. He was a very, very loving father. And 
Yeah, and now his daughter is right in front. I'm going to show you. I sometimes when it's private people, like she's not a celebrity, but sometimes when it's private people, that's not to do with true crime or something. I, I maybe don't show their grades or something, but I think this is okay. She's uh, his beloved daughter, and I don't have. I just have the one rock to leave, but uh, it's important to remember Latoya's life as well. She had a master's degree in social services, I believe, a master's degree, and it's from all that I've read about her, super smart, super well-loved, and very, very, very beautiful, and such, just heartbreaking, so young, and here she is, here's Junkyard Dog's daughter. So there's Junkyard Dog, and here's our precious and beloved daughter, Latoya Akisha Ritter. Kisha the Diva. I guess we Kisha the Diva. June 19th, 1980. October 19th, 2011. And you can see what I meant by it. how beautiful with that smile. And absolutely tragic. But yeah, this is father and daughter right here together both far too young right I mean how old Junkyard Dog 46 come on 26 and 31 as you can see when it comes to these small towns I just want to point out, it looks like somebody's uh, still not, has a ha doesn't have a headstone here. I hope they get one soon. Most graves here have flowers on them. And I'm sure the ones that don't are going to. Seems like small towns tend to, when they're smaller cemeteries like this. I mean, this is what you're seeing here is, is the entire cemetery. This is the entire cemetery here. But they come out and uh, tend to the graves and bring flowers. Need some trinkets so you can see some more uh, people that are waiting for their headstones. Family members that are waiting for them to get their headstones, I should say. Well, you know what I mean. And this one beautiful statue just here. Not sure who this is for, if this is just part of the cemetery. It's cold around this time of day in here, North Carolina. It's, uh, uh, my hand's actually frozen to the camera. But, and I think about that when I think about coming to graves. I think about funerals in the winter and or late fall, how cold it is. And at nighttime, funeral uh, cemeteries don't scare me at all, at all. But they can be. It, something about the bleakness of the of the landscape when there's no leaves, there's no not a lot of green except for the coniferous trees, of course. But something when it's cold, it's just more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just harder to see, and especially someone so young and vibrant. And Junkyard Dog, who's, like I said, 46 as well. Young. It's so popular and so cool. I love Junkyard Dog. I thought he was I thought he was just so cool. I love Grab Them Cakes. I had the wrestling album and Pile Driver, the second album. And my God. He used to come out, I think, to another one bites the dust early on in his career. Then when the wrestlers put out their album, which is which holds up, by the way, I might add. I think I still listen to uh, some stuff that I per like I got the um, digital copy just on them, and I still listen to some of those songs: "Real American," "Grab Them Cakes," "Pile Driver," "Land of a Thousand Dances." You know, when you're driving or driving on long road trips, they're fun to listen to. And his song "Grab Them Cakes" was good. It's funky. Rest in peace, Latoya. 
Rest in peace, JYD. And I actually remembered that I do have one other rock left in my car. I keep a bag of rocks. As per my tradition, which is a Jewish tradition, of bringing rocks to a grave and leaving. So I do have one left in my car, in the bag, because uh, this is the last what yeah so last time I'm hitting on this uh, giant road trip and so I've run out I've been so many but I do have one more and I want to give it to you. leave it not give it to you. leave it to the toy try to walk respectfully at the foot of the graves but sometimes but sometimes you have to walk across graves and that's expected in the cemetery if you've ever been to one before. Alright, I nattered on long enough. Mumble, mumble. Oof. It is, the temperature has just dropped. I'm still technically in the south, North Carolina, but still kind of the south. It's cold. I'm happy to come out here. And, um, rest in peace, Junkyard Dog and Latoya. North Carolina is God's country. It's beautiful out here. I highly recommend if you ever get the chance to visit North Carolina. I really love it out here. I'll be back. Peace out.